dear students in this class i'm going to discuss about gaun chart and scheduling with scrum in the previous class i have discussed about risk analysis with simulation for scheduling so now we are discussing about gaun chart and scheduling with scrum so the agenda for this lecture is what is the gaun chart and what are the benefits and weakness i'll show you an example then with the help of ms project i'm going to give you a demo for two problems after that i will explain how to schedule an agile project that is scheduling with scrum there i am going to explain one techniques for a scrum scheduling called poker estimation now we'll go to the gaun chart so one of the oldest but still one of the most valuable methods for presenting the project schedule information is gaun chart he is the person who developed professor who developed this so developed around 1917 by henry l gaunt a pioneer in the field of scientific management the gaunt chart shows the planned and actual progress for several tasks displayed as bars against the horizontal timeline this is an example of gaunt chart it is particularly effective and easy to read method for indicating the actual current status of each of a set of task compared to the planned progress for each item of the set as a result the gaun chart can be helpful in expediting sequencing and reallocating resources among task as well as in the valuable and but mundane job for keeping track of how things are going charts usually contain number of special symbols to design or highlight items of special concern to the situation being charted it is essential for a student to be able to understand just what is that network and gaun chart shows one understanding is gained once understanding is gained software is easier faster and given a project of a size that reflect reality far more cost effective what are the benefits of this gaun chart first even though they may contain a great deal of information they are easily understood while they do require frequent updating as does any scheduling or controlling device they are easy to maintain as long as task requirement are not changed or major alternation of the schedule are not made gaun chart provide a picture of the current state of your project they are as easy to construct as a network what are the weakness of this gaun chart if your project is complex with a large set of activities it may be very difficult to, to follow multiple activity path through the project so gaun chart are powerful devices for communicating to senior management but networks are usually more helpful in the hands on task of managing the project now we'll go with the gaun chart example its a major strength is that it is easy to read so all popular project management software will prepare gaun chart and most have some options available for customization for example in this class i'm going to explain how to use ms project software for constructing this gaun chart on balance ease of construction and ease of use how made the gaun chart most popular method for displaying a project schedule nonetheless activity on node network is still most useful for the project manager to exercise control over the schedule and the viewer may be misled if the gaun chart is not read carefully or if it does not contain all appropriate information before constructing the gaun chart there are certain precedents diagram restrictions that you need to understand what are the precedents diagram restriction is first is the finish to start so what is the meaning of this finish to start is that look at this here so there are activity one day activity one has five days monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday this one so after finishing this activity two will start that is why one finish to start plus two days so finish this activity one after two day saturday sunday 
again the second activity will start. So, that is the meaning of finish to start. One thing you should remember that you see the direction of this arrow in the Gantt chart. So, it is starting from finish and ending at the start. So, that is called finish to start. So, activity 2 must not start before activity 1 has been completed. So, after completion of activity 1 only the activity 2 can start. This is the typical arrangement of an activity and its predecessor. Other finish start arrangement also possible. So, then the for example, if the predecessor information had been written 1 fs plus 2 days, what it implies? Activity 2 would be scheduled to start at least 2 days after the completion of activity 1 as shown in this, this figure. For instance, if activity 1 was the pouring of a concrete sidewalk, so activity 2 might be any activity that used the sidewalk because there is a time required to set the concrete that is why the 2 days. The next conversion is start to start this example you see here also starting this arrow diverge arrow also starting point. So, for example, activity 5 cannot begin until activity 4 has been underway for the at least 2 days. So, how we are writing this start to start plus 2 days. So, that means activity 5 has to be started after the completion of activity 4 2 days after completion of activity 4. So, after 2 days starting of activity 4 then activity 5 will start. So, that is the meaning of 4 start start plus 2 days. So, setting electrical wires in place cannot begin until 2 days after the framing has begun. So, that is why this start to start has come. The next one is finish to finish. You see this is an example finish to finish. So, activity 7 this 7 must be complete at least one day before the activity 8 completed you see this. Now, we are referring only in terms of finishing of these two activity. So, activity 7 has to be completed one day before the completion of activity 8. So, for example, if activity 7 is the priming the wall of the house. So, activity 8 might be activities involved in selecting, purchasing and finally, delivering the wallpaper. So, it is important not to hang the paper until the wall primer has dried for 24 hours. So, that is the application of this finish to finish. The next one is start to finish you see this, this side we are starting this side is finishing. So, activity 11 cannot be completed 7 days since the start of activity 10 see this one activity 11 cannot be completed before 7 days since the start of activity 10. So, if activities 10 and 11 are the two major cruising activities in a prepaid week long ocean cruise the total time cannot be less than the promised week. This is an example of where we can use start to finish. So, the start to finish relationship is rare because there are usually simple ways to map the required relationship. These are the four precedence constraint one is finish to start, start to start, finish to finish, then start to finish. Now, I will explain how to use Gantt chart in MS project software. When we open MS project, the Gantt chart view is typically the default view displayed. At any time you can display the Gantt chart view by clicking on the Gantt chart button on the far left of the task ribbon. The Gantt chart view contains two windows on the left is a window that contains a form that is used to enter work breakdown structure data into the program. So, the Gantt chart is displayed on the right side of the window. For example, this is the problem which I have taken there are A, B, C, D, E, F activities there are precedence diagram there is a time. So, for this problem I am going to construct the Gantt chart. So, for that given problem I have drawn the precedence diagram. So, what is the critical activity A C F 11 plus 19 is the largest path that is the critical path. Now, I am going to give you a demo with the help of MS project how to construct the Gantt chart for the given problem. Dear students, now I have taken a sample problem by using that problem with the help of Microsoft project software, 
are going to explain how to construct a GAN chart. So, I have opened the MS project. So, I go for blank project. So, as soon as you open, you see that there is a left side window is there and right side window. So, there is a different task mode is there, task name is there, duration is there, start time is there, finish time is there. So, first I will start with start, this is a task name. The duration because I am going to draw activity on node. So, I am starting with the start node. So, the duration is I have given only 0 day. Next I have to specify the starting date. So, when I click this drop down menu, there is an option for the calendar. So, so for example, today I am starting 0 today. The second task name is A. What is the duration? The duration is 5 days. Now, see when you drag it on the right hand side, there is an option called precedence. So, when you type the precedence is the start. So, when you enter 1, so automatically it shows, it shows the starting and finishing date. So, the next activity is the B, task name is B. So, what is the duration? It is 4 days. Then you need not bother about start and finish. You have to specify what is the predecessors. The predecessor is again start. So, when you enter it, if you click anywhere, it automatically picks the starting time and finishing time. And the third activity is C. The duration is 6 days. I am entering 6. Then I am going to write what is preceding activity. So, preceding is activity A. So, but I have to specify the number. So, I am writing 2. So, click anywhere, it is chosen this one. So, as soon as you enter, you see on the right hand side, the gun chart is appearing. I will come to explain this gun chart later. First, I will first just I am entering the data. The next activity is a D. Then, duration of that activity is 2 days. Then, the precedence is 3 it picks automatically. Then the next activity, activity is E, the duration is 5 day, then the precedence is 3. The next activity is F, the duration is 8 days and the precedence is 4 comma 5. Now, Finally, I am going to write the end. The end, the duration is 0 day, but the precedence is 6 that is E and F. So, 6 and 7. So, now I have completed. On the right hand side, I am dragging it and dragging on the left hand side. Now, you can see the right hand side. So, it will start today for example, December 20, it will be completed on 1st 16th January. And if you want to see the other type of chart, you go to this GAN chart, you develop a network diagram. So, this network diagram shows the red color, the orange color shows the critical activity, right. This is the this is the critical activity. You can see that the whole critical activity. So, you can there are other view also you can see that we can show the resource sheet others other than all we can do it separately, but at present either we can do, go for gun chart. You see the easily we can see what is the starting time of activity A, then what is the starting time of activity B and C. See here we follow finish to start in the sense after finishing activity A, then we are going to start activity C. So, after finishing activity B, we are going to start the next activity. So, the, the precedence constraint which we are using here is finish to start. So, the MS project is easy way to construct the GAN chart. Now, I have taken another little complicated problem where we are going to consider three time estimate. So, optimistic duration, most likely duration, pessimistic duration. For this problem also, I am going to give an another demo 
with the help of MS project. Dear students, in the previous demo, the time duration of activity is only one time is given, but there may be a situation, there will be a three time estimate may be given for doing each activity, like maybe optimistic time, pessimistic time and most likely time. So, what you have to do? We know that this optimistic, pessimistic and most likely time follow beta distribution. By using the formula of mean of a beta distribution that is optimistic time plus 4 times most likely time plus pessimistic time upon 6, you have to construct, you have to convert into single time estimate. After converting it to single time estimate, then you have to go for constructing this Gantt chart. So, I have converted into single time estimate. Now, I am going to start him with the start. I have to type activity name start. The duration is 0 days because it is only for indication. The starting date I am giving today's date. The next activity is A. The duration is 20 days and you drag on this turn side. So, you enter precedence the predecessors as 1, then it chooses start time finish time. Then go to activity B, so the duration is again 20 days, then type the predecessors again 1. Then activity C 10 days. the predecessor is 1. Then activity D, duration is 15 days, the predecessor is 2. Then activity E, the duration is 10 days, the predecessor is 3 and 4, so 3 comma 4, 3 comma 4 is, so B and C. I am refer, I am representing uh, representing that the first column number to represent the each task instead of saying b and c I am typing 3 comma 4 then f duration is 14 days predecessor is 3 comma 4 then g duration is 4 days predecessor is 3 comma 4, then H duration is 11 days, the predecessor is 2 comma 4, then I the predecessor is sorry duration is 18, predecessor is 8 comma 9 that is G and H, then J duration is 8 and predecessor is 5 comma 6, then finish duration is 0, the predecessor is 10 comma 11 comma 7. Now, I have completed. On the right hand side, you can see the gone chart. So, it is starting on December 20 and it will be finished on February 27. Now, we will discuss about scheduling for agile project. So, why scrum for scheduling? So, scrum is a popular framework for project management and product development and it is used for scheduling due to several key characteristics that make it effective in managing complex tasks and projects. Here are some reasons why Scrum is commonly used for scheduling. One is iterative and incremental. Scrum promotes an iterative and incremental approach to development. Work is organized into time boxed iterations called sprints, usually 1 to 4 weeks long. This allows for frequent inspection and adaptation, ensuring that the project stays on track 
and that any necessary adjustment can be made quickly. The second reason is flexibility and adaptability. Scrum is designed to be flexible and adaptive to change. The product backlog can be reprioritized and the team can adjust its plan at the beginning of each sprint during the sprint planning meeting. The adaptability is crucial in dynamic environments where the requirements may evolve or unexpected challenges arise. The next reason is customer feedback. So, regular feedback from stakeholders is integrated into the process through sprint reviews. At the end of each sprint, the team demonstrate the work completed and the stakeholders provides the feedback. This feedback loop ensures that the product align with the customer expectations and can be adjusted based on changing requirement. The next reason is transparency. Scrum emphasize transparency in all aspect of development process. The product backlog, sprint backlog and the progress are visible to all team members, stakeholders and often even customers. So, transparency helps in identifying potential issues early, allowing the team to address them promptly. The next concept is time boxing. So, time boxing that is the practice of fixing the duration of certain events such as sprints helps create a predictable and sustainable pace for the team. It provides a sense of urgency and ensures that the team deliver a potentially shippable product increment at the end of each sprint. The next advantage is collaboration. Scrum encourages close collaboration between team members and stakeholders. Daily stand up meetings, sprint planning, sprint reviews and retrospectives facilitate communication and alignment among the team members. Collaboration helps in identifying and resolving issues quickly, contributing to efficient scheduling. The next benefit is focus on value delivery. Scrum places a strong emphasis on delivering value to the customer. The product backlog is prioritized based on value and the team focus on delivering the most valuable features first. The value centric approach ensures that the product meet customer needs and provides a return on investment. Now, I am going to explain one technique called estimation poker for scheduling a agile project. Estimation poker, a technique used to gauge effort for user stories involves the development team. The scrum master facilitate this game to reach consensus among the developers. So, here what is going to happen? Each developers, they are going to provide how much effort is required to complete the task. So, if there is any difference, they are going to arrive at the consensus. So, that after arriving at consensus, we can say how much time can be allotted to complete the task. A deck of cards based on the Fibonacci series, for example, you know what is the Fibonacci series? The previous number is added 0, 1, 2, 1 and 2, 3, 3 and 5, 8 and so on. So, team members select cards privately to estimate effort aiming for a collective agreement on the complexity of the task. In estimation poker, each team member uses cards featuring Fibonacci sequence numbers to rate items in the product backlog. For instance, an 8 rated requirement demands more effort than rated 1, 2, 3, 5 because the number is bigger one. So, an 8 rated item should be slightly less than twice of the effort of a 5 rated one and approximately equal to the combined effect of items rated 3 and 5. So, the relative assessment aids in understanding and comparing efforts levels among different backlog items. So, the development team begins by choosing a mutual requirement rated as 5 as the benchmark for the backlog. Then the product owner presents backlog requirements sequentially. Then again the developers will take the poker cards and they will show what is the amount of effort is required. This way we will keep on continue for 
for completing the whole product. So, each team members select a card indicating their estimated effort and placing it face down. Once revealed simultaneously, if there is no consensus, discussion starts focusing first on the highest and lowest estimations. estimations. Further, voting round occurs until an agreement is reached within 4 rounds. If no consensus emerges, the scrum master helps identify a mutually acceptable score. Typically, using estimation poker, the team can estimate the entire backlog of a backlog in few hours, facilitating efficient estimation. Now, further we will discuss about scheduling with scrum. Here, how you can approach scheduling with scrum? One is the time boxed sprints. Other features of this scheduling with scrum is, it is a time boxed sprints. So, the basic unit of time in scrum is the sprint typically ranging from 1 to 4 weeks. The team commits to deliver a potentially shippable product increment at the end of each sprint. The sum term is product backlog. The product backlog is a prioritized list of all features, enhancement, bug fixes and other work that needs to be done. The team along with the product owner reviews and prioritize the backlog regularly. Then sprint planning, before each sprint there is a sprint planning meeting, the team select items from the product backlog based on priority and its capacity for the upcoming sprint. Then daily stand ups, daily stand up meetings help the team stay aligned and discuss progress. So, team members share what they did yesterday, what they plan to do today and any blockers. Then sprint review, at the end of each sprint there is a sprint review where the team demonstrate what was accomplished. So, stakeholders provide feedback and the product backlog is adjusted based on the review. Then sprint retrospective, after the review there is a sprint retrospective to reflect on the sprint and identify areas of improvement. This continuous feedback loop helps the team adapt and improve its processes. In this lecture, I have discussed about the Gantt chart and explained what are the benefits and weaknesses. Then I have explained how to construct a Gantt chart. Then I have given a demo for a two for two sample problems with the help of MS project. Then I have explained what are the important points in scheduling with Scrum then what are the various features of scheduling with scrum. Then very importantly, I have explained one technique for scrum scheduling, that technique is called poker estimation. Thank you.